Today we're spilling like a little bit, a little bit of tea. Today's gonna be a fun one. I am really excited. I have been looking forward to this day since January 17th at 11 a.m. You remember the time, very Oh, much. yes, Sneeve. I remember every moment of my drama. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna tell the whole story, okay? Because they don't deserve that much of my energy. I'm just gonna give like a little bit of uh, enough context for you to understand the premise of what we're doing here today. For those who can't see, I'm doing my makeup. I'm in my PJs, got a messy bun. I have a little bit of a spray tan, so I'm putting on like a deeper glow base to kind of help even my skin out. My spray tan's like fading, but it's still darker than my face slightly. So with a little bit of the trick of makeup, I will look like I have one shade. So yeah, January 17th, um, I hopped on a business call. I have many of them. I didn't think anything of this one. My mom was in the kitchen. We were at my place in BC. You guys know it's very open concept. I was sitting at the dining table. My mom was in the kitchen so she could hear what was going on. Not because she was trying to, just because it's an open concept space and she was in the kitchen. And then my dad was actually sitting with me, not on camera. Like they couldn't see him, but he was sitting with me because he was going to be taking some notes for me because this project was something that he was actually helping me with. And some of my team was there, some weren't. And then there was some people from this company who had hired me for some work. They had signed the contract months prior. They had actually paid part of my payment. So most of my contracts, I get payment up front in part. So sometimes it's 25%, sometimes it's 50% upon signing. Um, and then I get the remaining balance upon completion. That is the majority of my contracts. And so they had already paid my partial payment. Like all, all was good. All was good in the hood, as they would say. I don't know who would say that, but somebody would, I'm sure. And I didn't think anything of this meeting. Um, I knew what the meeting was about. It was like an ideating meeting, so we were gonna be discussing concept, you know, what I was gonna be doing for them so that I could like best customize my work for them. And you know, each one of my clients, whether it is content or whether it's speaking, I make my stuff just for them, right? So for a lot of the clients, I jump on calls and discuss what, they, what they're looking for so that I can best deliver my work and satisfy my client, which is my goal with everything I do is to always make my clients happy, right? I, I am a type A personality. I'm very hard on myself. I'm very driven. I'm very determined. Um, I used to be a big perfectionist. I've worked really hard to not be. But yeah, I'm, I'm a type A. So I, I really put my all into everything that I do. And I'm critical of myself. And I often feel like what I've done is, is never enough. And my team has to really like be like, Molly, the client was happy. So you should be happy. Like you did your job. You made people happy. They're satisfied with your work. So why are you beating yourself up that it wasn't good enough to your standards? You know, so I'm hard on myself. Um, and I think a lot of creatives are. So I really try to go above and beyond for all of my clients. And I jump on this call and basically they just verbally beat me up. I think is the easiest way to get down to it. They just tore me to shreds in every way possible. So um, I quit on the call because it was pretty clear that that's ultimately what they wanted. It was pretty clear that the reason they brought me on this call was not to do what they said they were doing on the call but was rather to just tell me how much they didn't want to work with me and and why in like the meanest way possible. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, it was <laughs> It was shocking. <laughs> it was like when in school, you know, like when you were like a junior. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really nasty. And I immediately like I think I was very gracious. Like I was as professional as one could be. My heart was pounding. You guys know I struggle with anxiety. Like I'm very open that I struggle with my mental health and have for a very long time. My heart was pounding, I was sweating, I was in shock, caught completely off guard because they just launched right on in. And I was like, that's totally fine. You know, I'm not gonna try to convince you to like me uh, or wanna work with me. I think it's pretty clear that like, we're probably not a good fit at this point anymore. And like- I mean, that's all it was, was that you just weren't a fit for I the project. I wasn't a good fit. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, they, they decided that I wasn't a good fit for the project. The way to go about that was to tell my team was to just say to my team, hey, look, 
we actually have decided to go a different direction with this project. That happens. I just had a brand like reach out and we were working on something and then they're like, you know what? We've completely changed the concept we're going for and you're no longer a fit. But in the future, we think we're definitely gonna have a campaign where you are a fit and we're excited to come back to you. That That's happens. It. The incorrect thing to do is to verbally abuse somebody as to why you don't think they're a fit anymore. And so all they had to do was reach out to my team. I didn't even have to be on that call. Uh, and to have entirely purposefully misrepresented the call was so inappropriate. And after I quit on the call, like said, you know, I'm happy to back out of this project. It seems like you're not comfortable working with me for the reasons you've raised. And they were fair enough. There was, for the most part, it's like, okay, it's just not a fit. Yeah, it's just like, not a fit. Like, that it, was it, just, it's not a fit. That's it. At the end of the day, their concerns just equaled I was not the right fit anymore. And so I said, like, yeah, let's, let's part ways. It just doesn't seem like we're going to meet in the middle. The appropriate thing at that point would have been for them to say, glad we've come to an agreement. They didn't. They just kept beating me up. <laughs> they just kept going and asked essentially if I was willing to change who I am <laughs> to make them happy. <sighs> and I have built a career on being who I am and on empowering other people to be who they are and to believe that who you are is enough and to love yourself and to say, if you don't like me, that's your problem. I don't care, you know? And that's who I am. I'm unapologetically myself. And so I was just like, no, no, <laughs> I'm never going to change myself to make other people happy. I'm all about self growth and development. Lord knows I've done much of that and will continue to always. But will I change myself to make other people like me more? No. And so I said that they then went in for a third time. <laughs> At this point, my team thankfully stepped in and they just said, Molly, you don't need to be on this call. Hop off. We'll handle it. The moment we dropped off the call, my mom, my dad and I were all just in shock. I started crying and screaming and like just was really hurt. My parents were both irate as well, just because again, like not being the right fit is fine, but the way they went about verbally abusing me was not, uh, especially given they know that I'm very outspoken about mental health. It just was like so inappropriate. And so what I now know happened is uh, my team tore them a new one and was like, never have I ever seen something so unprofessional, so inappropriate, so uncalled for. This is not the way you should ever go about this. Like this is shocking and despicable. My team essentially told them, "You're we're never working with you again. Like, sorry, you're no longer a client of our company. That was that. I, you know, had meetings with my team days after and like, after having time to process and we all discussed, um, they were profusely apologetic that that happened. They said they've never ever seen anything of that nature. But the kicker is we found something where they publicly shared six weeks prior to that meeting that they weren't gonna work with me. So they had decided six weeks before bringing me on that call that they didn't wanna work with me anymore, but they still brought me on that call, misrepresenting it as a brainstorming call. And that was the real kicker which told me that their intent was for me to quit. Their intent was to berate me until I quit in the hopes that that meant they would get their money back because I quit. Whereas in the contract, if they let me go, they still have to pay me because they held me captive for months, right? So essentially in these deals, like I can't take other deals because I'm with you. And so because I was held for months in a deal with them, it meant that I let other work go. And so that's why you still have to pay me because you've held me for that time. And so essentially they wanted me to quit so that they would get their money, which is really sickening um, to think that a bunch of professionals, cause there was about five people from their company on the call, including the CEO. And it was really sickening to me to think that this company literally cooked up a storm. Like they were like, hmm, how can we make sure that we get our money back? Oh, we'll just be really mean. So she wants to quit. Essentially, they were legally obligated to pay me in full, particularly because we had this evidence that this was premeditated. And I didn't have to take the job, obviously. They didn't want me. Where are my brushes? Oh, sorry, I moved them. What? I thought we were filming for something else. Sorry about that. Oh, and look, Elton John's into help. Hi, Elton Melton, man. He's like, oh, oh can I help? I he hear you lost something. Me. I can help. He says, oh, mommy needs something. She's very blind. Mm-hmm. Um, she needs help. So... Needless to say, that like re it really hurt me. Specifically because the things that they were saying about me were already my own wounds. They're already all the negative things I tell myself. They're already things I've been to therapy for. 
many times over. And so it's like anybody pointing out the things you're already insecure about. It's like anybody pointing out something that you've spent time trying to work through through yourself. And it brought up all of that again. And it really shattered my confidence and my self-esteem. Oh, baby, says mommy sad. Don't be sad, mommy. I love mommy. He really seems to know. <laughs> he does. He's like, this is sad story. I have heard this one. He says, I was there. It's true. It all happened. It was really bad. It would be we difficult to even explain the depth of abuse. <laughs> it was so shocking. It's just the funniest part is my team was like, they seemed shocked that we were upset and told them they did something wrong. Like they genuinely didn't see anything wrong with what they did, which is actually even more terrifying that there's people out there who like think that kind of thing is like just like totally fine. And run companies. And run companies, yeah. I wouldn't want to work there. That's no, sure. not if that's their work environment. Talks are terrible. Anyways, you know, I'm not going to pretend it didn't spark like weeks of anxiety. I was getting really bad panic attacks again. It like, it really affected me. I wish I could be like, I'm a strong gal. That was whatever. Like, they don't matter. It did. It affected me. And that's okay. I needed to process what happened. I needed to work through those emotions and pick myself back up. I've done it many times and I'll consistently have to keep doing it. And, you know, very early on... <laughs> I decided what I was gonna do with that payment because I wasn't just gonna like let that money just enter my bank account and sit there. Like I knew that I needed to take that money and do something for myself. I try not to spend my money frivolous. Fri frivolously. Fri frivolously. <laughs> you guys know the word I'm going for. Frivol frivolously. Oh, now I can't say it. It's a hard word to say. You know, I treat myself every now and then and generally it's as like a congratulations, I hit a milestone thing. So, goodness, I'm trying to get this product out. By the way, Sigma Beauty is kind of dope. They sent me some products and I actually like love a lot of them. So I'm somebody who kind of always like set milestones for myself and when I hit them, I would treat myself with something. For example, when I left my speaking company, so 18 to 20, I toured full time as a speaker for this company. And when I left that company at 20 and I started my own speaking business, I said, when I get my first speaking engagement booked through my own company, I'm going to buy a Kate Spade bag. And that was like my dream. I've always been a handbag girl. I've always been a shoes girl. Love shoes, bags, and jackets. Those are my thing. Love a good sunglasses too. We know that. Oh my God, you guys, I found my Fendi sunglasses. <laughs> it's so shocking. They've been lost since like the end of September or like mid-October. And I just found them the other day. And we've looked and looked and looked and looked. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you we've been reunited and I'm so happy. Reunited. It feels so good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I got the, I forgot my first speaking engagement and I bought this black and white polka dot Kate Spade bag that I still have to this day and I think I always will because it's so sentimental. I use that thing to the point where the zipper is cracked. Like, I loved that bag. The biggest dream I could have wanted was to own a Kate Spade bag and I've been very, very fortunate and like way, way more lucky than I could have ever imagined and like, you know, I have not a lot but a handful of designer bags at this point that I've treated myself to for certain milestones and I love that because they all have memories attached to them and they're all sentimental in, in their own ways. And today I'm gonna go buy a bag on Rodeo Drive. Not because I am celebrating what happened, but because I'm taking my power back. And I'm gonna call it my FU bag. And every time I use that bag, it's gonna be my girl boss moment. And I'm gonna remind myself that the people who don't like me don't matter. That the people who try to tear me down don't matter because they're for every person who does not like me, I know that there are so many who do, who love me and support me and believe in me and what I'm doing. And so I'm not gonna give time to the people who don't. Like I said earlier, I'm not gonna change myself to make anybody like me more, to make anybody happy. I prioritize my own happiness. So I'm not gonna give space in my brain to people who make me feel bad about myself anymore. When I was being bullied, I had to learn how to not let their negativity pull me down to their level, but rather let their negativity fuel my fire to be better, to rise above that, to be exactly the opposite of what they expected me to be. They expected nothing from me. Guess what? I'm going to go. I'm going to be successful. I'm going to do something with my life. I'm not going to give you the power to control me and my mind and my feelings and my life. That is exactly what I'm doing today. That money, 
I didn't have to work for that money, but I sure had to be traumatized for it. And which I'm not going to... way worse. Yeah, which is way worse. And I'm not going to let that trauma money sit in my bank account. I'm going to get myself... I have no idea. Like a nice Dior bag or a Chanel bag or a Louis Vuitton. I have no clue. We have no, we have no goals. We're going to go shop till our heart's content. And you're coming with me and you can help me pick. We're going to have a nice lunch. We're going to have a nice lunch in Beverly Hills. I'm going to have a beautiful day on them. On their dime. This isn't about the physical thing that I'm buying. But it's about telling all of you to do the same in your life. Bad days happen. Bad things happen. It's inevitable. But it's all about how you react to those bad things. And my parents always did a great job at helping turn the negative things in my life into something positive and teaching me to do the same. And whether that was like, you know, that I missed pajama day because I had to go get an eye surgery. And like to a four-year-old, that's devastating to miss pajama day to have to go to the hospital and get surgery. So my parents found as many ways as possible to make that fun. And, you know, my school threw an extra pajama day that year for when I was better back at school. Oh my god, why can't I open this book? That's so nice, I didn't know that. Yeah, you don't remember that? No. Yeah. Maybe oh. it was just my class. It probably was just your class, yeah. To enjoy they it. got double pajama day. <laughs> I got school pajama day and hospital pajama day. But like whenever I was going through a hard time or whenever something was stressful, like my parents would always find a way to bring joy back and to do something good. And that doesn't always mean something that costs money. It just means finding ways to do something for yourself. Self-care. Do something that makes you feel good despite the negative around you. I know it's not easy. As I said, like I'm not going to pretend... That just because I've been through this so many times before, that it was easier to bounce back this time. It wasn't. It took me down for weeks. It triggered my anxiety to the point where I was like considering, do I have to go on SSRIs again? And I've been off SSRIs for three years. And I was like, you know, if I need to go back on, I need to go back on. Like if my brain chemistry is all out of whack at this point and it's, I can't get it back myself, like I just need help and that's okay. And I didn't, like I was able to, to apply all of the coping strategies that I have learned through so many years of therapy and self growth and development work um, and get myself back on track. But it's, it's hard. It's hard every time that something pulls you down. But like I said, life isn't about the bad things that happen to you. It's about how you react to the bad things that happen to you. And I hope that I can inspire all of you to learn how to let the bad things that happen to you actually make you a better and stronger person. And all of these things, I believe, is, is God or the universe, whatever you believe in, testing you and, and pushing you to that next level. I guess I just, I want you to understand that it's still hard for me too. But truly, I've learned in my life that people like that don't matter. They matter in the moment, but they don't matter long term. And so we're going to have a fun day on them. And I'm just going to not think about them. I'm going to think about all of you, all of the people who do support me and who believe in me. And yeah, every time I wear this new bag, I know it's going to be only good vibes. I'm going to finish my makeup. I'm going to get dressed. And then we're going to hit the streets of Beverly Hills. Fun. Fun little girl shopping day. All right. I'm done. The fit's on. I am wearing just my like platform chunky white converse this all-in-one outfit is like so comfortable it's from Aritzia then I just have this black and white Alice and Olivia jacket that I got on like a crazy sale during lockdown my tried and true my sturdy Prada bag nylon love it uh hair up and a little silk scrunchie this has been my lip combo lately it's like just so easy and so comfortable it is this Sigma lip oil, I'm loving the lip oil trend. And then this Sigma lippy underneath it. And then for the sunnies, because we know my girl's got to have her eye protection, you know. I just have my white Chanel's that I got for Christmas. What do you think? Do they go with the outfit, Mom? Oh, yes. Very, very, very much. I love so this outfit. I want it to be comfortable, but still kind of chic. It's a little chilly out. LA winter this year has been a rough one for us, but that's okay. I've got my perfume on, my signature scent, Santel 33 from the Labo. It's a unisex scent. I just love unisex scents. I, you, I don't like anything too sweet, too floral, too powdery. Give me like a good, clean unisex fragrance. So now you know what I smell like, what I look like. We're gonna go get food because it's actually like 1.30 in the afternoon. Now I, I was doing some work between when I got ready and now. So we're gonna take Elton for a little poop walk 
get in an Uber, head to Rodeo Drive. We have this Italian place that we've been to a couple of times. So we're just gonna go there because it's easy, we know it's good. And then let the shopping begin. All right, first things first, we need food in the tummy because no one likes hungry shopping. So I'll pop up the name of the restaurant. I've been here a couple times. It's always delightful, it's always delicious. It's been such a rainy winter here and today is sunny. And that feels like such a good omen, like God is shining down and smiling on us. So we sat outside and we have a caprese salad that we're sharing. We substituted the mozzarella for burrata. Love me some burrata. And then we're starting the day off with a cocktail. And when I say starting the day, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. So I feel like it's fine, you know? It's five o'clock somewhere, it's almost happy hour. This is, a, this is a celebration. This is a celebration. This is, you know, we're taking back the power. We're removing the negativity. So starting with a good old Aperol spritz. This is one of those drinks that my mom and I both agreed the first time we had it, we were like, eh. I don't get it, but it grows on you. It really grows on you. If you don't like a sweet cocktail, if you like more bitter, this is such a great one. It just has such a fresh, light summer vibe. So that's what we're doing. And then my mom's having a steak. I'm having risotto with lamb. Delish. Let's dig it. My lamb and risotto is here. My mom's steak has arrived. Time to dig it. Full stomach, coffee in hand. Elton John has a matching black and white bandana. We're twinning. I won't lie, I do have like underwear lines because I have my period panties from Vicks on, but you know, look, if you look at my butt, you see underwear lines. It's on you. It's your fault. Uh, I'm nice and comfortable. That's what matters when you're crampy and bloated. And I am ready to hit Rodeo Drive. The three stores I want to hit up the most are Fendi, Dior, and Chanel. Because the whole point of buying this bag is I'm going to buy something that I would never normally let myself buy, even in a celebratory capacity. These are three brands that I don't own, like a handbag or shoes. I own sunglasses from Fendi that I got at the outlet, and then I own these ones that my mom got on sale. But I do not own like anything else from any of those brands. Um, so those are the ones I'm most intrigued to hit up first. Got nothing specific in mind. I want it to have girl boss energy. We made it to Rodeo Drive. The sign is somewhere over there. My mom said I should point, but I don't know where. There it is. Okay. Hello. <laughs> well, first place we went was Dior Mens. So, whoops. Uh, but we're on our way to Dior Women's. And actually, Dior Men like have really nice bags and they're cheaper than the women's, so. We made it to the women's Dior, but we are now in a lineup. Fancy, exclusive. This is the stuff I hate about like designer shops. I don't like the like exclusive feeling, but I get that that's the allure. Oh, Lord. All of these loud Ferraris. I feel like I have a bougie heart, just not a bougie wallet. I really like this black on black Dior saddle bag. It's so pretty. It's like so sleek and honestly it is fierce. It is girl boss energy. Success. <laughs> the bag is uh, basically as big as I am. Uh-huh. Fendi was our girl. Yeah. Fendi was the girl. I will show you when we get back. Here's the thing, she was the last stop. And when you know, you know. When you find the right thing, your heart's just like, that's it. And that's why I came with no specific bag in mind. I just wanted to let it come. And boy, did she. <laughs> I love it. Okay, I can't wait to show you when we get home. Home sweet home. Elton John is playing with a toy, as you can hear. It is... Yes, it's very good. Very... Why don't you go play... This way, oh, that's very good. He's so funny. He's had his dinner, we're all happy, it's like seven o'clock. So I actually think I'm gonna show you guys what I got tomorrow morning. It's gonna be rainy and gray, but it'll probably be at least slightly better lighting than it is now. So I'm gonna just like not open this. I'm gonna put it in my closet and tomorrow we will go through it. Spoiler, I didn't just get a bag, okay? Though I did, it's in my budget. What I got was all within budget. I'm very excited. It is so me. I, if there's one thing I hate, it's like um, the vibe of going into some of these stores. Do you know what I mean, mom? Yes. Sometimes when you feel the judgmental glare, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, we're all just freaking people. Man. I think, I have to say, I think they were all nice today. They, like everywhere. They, they were. were. When I first walked into Dior, it was tense. Didn't you feel that? The first one. Uh like, it got better. Slightly. Uh, yeah, th th it was just very awkward at first. I actually thought it had really improved since a few years ago. Yeah. It Much is, more like... It got better. Like Chanel and Fendi, delightful. Yeah. Everybody was a delight. Dior, they became a delight. But yeah. when I first walked in, I was like... Ooh. 
maybe you were just like out of practice <laughs> of going into those nice stores. I, just, I don't know. So, sometimes you can just have, there's a weird vibe and it's just like, at the end of the day, we're all humans and like nobody's better than somebody else for like buying Fendi, you know? You know, Elton John, it, none of this matters. It's all stupid, but here I am anyways. And this couldn't be, there couldn't be a better F you bag. And you found your Fendi glasses. It's like a sign. How weird is that, that I just found them? So you'll see tomorrow why this is the perfect F you bag. I'm gonna curl into bed with a cup of tea. I am so pleased. Look how big this is, this is so ridiculous. I had a really great day. I feel really good about this. I am gonna forget about those people and move on with my life with an adorable handbag shoe combo. In hand and foot. Get it? Get it? <laughs> okay, I will see you in the morning. Wow, Alton John, were you very, very porch? Now yep. he's licking his empty food bowl. Which he Wishful does. Wishful thinking. Every day. Constant. Every time he goes for a drink throughout the day, he'll then lick his empty food bowl. And maybe there's a little remnants. He was very happy the other day because he found some kidlets when I was cleaning out. Remember, I was yes. cleaning. And he found kidlets. I was like, oh kidlets my god. The kidlets and the bits. The kidlets and the bits. The kidlets and the bits. It is time. It is time to reveal the absolutely iconic FU bag. I'm very excited to share this with you. Okay, look, I know my taste is not everybody's taste. We're all entitled to our own opinions. If you don't like this, that is your prerogative. I love it, and that's what matters. And, okay, I'm just gonna get into it. So they have like these little bows they tied around the handles. He literally carried it out to our Uber for us, which I thought was so sweet. Um, they were just all like very, very, very nice and very helpful and like the sales associate gets full credit for this. I was looking at a bunch of different bags that were newly released, but I was really going in there curious about a baguette, which is one of their, like one of Fendi's most iconic styles. It's been around for so long. Okay, there's four boxes in here. We'll get into it. It's been around for so long since like, I wanna say the 90s. It was, it's the bag that was made very popular um, by Carrie Bradshaw in Sex and the City. I've actually never watched Sex and the City, but I do know that that's what popularized it. I'm gonna take my slippers off, I'm gonna get comfy with you guys. I am wearing the same all-in-one bodysuit as yesterday because I feel like it'll show off best with an all-black look. Okay, we've got the box. This is the bag. Do, do, do. Okay, I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh, that was a little present I think that he gave you? Oh, that's so nice. But what's inside? I think it's just all of my, um, like... Oh, yes, yes, all your uh, information, okay. Cleaning cloth and some info. Nice. But it's like a cute it's little... It's cute little bag, actually. Actually, I think yeah. maybe if you put sunglasses in it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. You could. It's, it's cute. It has like this... It's, it's definitely plastic. a thing. I don't know. It's sunglasses, yeah. Um... This, this is her. I like small bags because I'm a small gal. Like so many bags just literally look quite, quite dumb on me. So I ended up going with a baguette, but it is a limited edition one from this season. It's shearling. It's adorable. And tell me, okay, it comes with a chain, which is way too long on me. Cause again, short girl, but that's okay. Cause I didn't, I'm not going to be using the chain. I got my own custom strap for it to make it a little bit more me. But tell me, this is not the most perfect F you bag. <laughs> we it F all over it. literally has F all over it. So I felt like that was perfect. This fits everything I need. It is so soft. Elton loves it because it's just like him. So now I have my little fur baby on my left and my little fur purse on my right. Did you tell them all the different stores you went to before you found this? Yes. <laughs> this was the final stop of the day. They were actually open the latest. Chanel and Dior both closed at 6 and they closed at 7. And thank God they did. Um, okay, so I did get my own strap for it to make it a little bit more me. Um, the chain is, like I said, too long, but also it's just a little too like fancy for me. I'm a casual gal. Like Most of the time I'm in stuff like this. and I like my stuff to be casual, to be easy. I don't like high maintenance bags. I don't like precious leathers and like delicate bags. I'm not a delicate girl. Like I'm a blind gal with a guide dog. Okay, I'm throwing my stuff on the floor. Like I'm just like that. I want low maintenance. So I got this strap to go with it. With F all over it. With you. F's all <laughs> over it. Perfect for the F you aesthetic. So I'm gonna clip that on. Okay, so this is the strap on the bag. Absolutely love it. 
And this is very much going to be reminiscent of my favorite Prada bag because we noticed that the strap that I picked has this loop on it where you could attach a mini bag the way my Prada one has that one on the chest. So I purchased another thing to go with it. All of this was like less expensive than the Dior and the Chanel. So it all worked out. And I feel like I love it because it's so custom. Like I made it my own, which I really like. <laughs> it's so cute there was a couple of different ones um there was a sparkly one that i looked at and i could always buy a different one in the future you know to switch out but we all kind of collectively agreed that like this was the last one this was the last one of this one and wait it's actually so cute it has its own crossbody chain <laughs> so you can wear this as its own bag <laughs> You just want to go out with credit cards. Yeah, like if you just want to... I, I plan to put my doggy poop bags in it. Guy doggy life, you know? But um, if you just wanted to like grab your credit cards and run into the store. Like, so freaking cute. <laughs> it's so me. It's floofy. It's cute. And like, I love the different colors. So the shirling of the mini bag is a different texture and color to the shirling on the big bag, but I feel like it just coordinates so well. I'm completely obsessed, but I didn't stop there, friends, because I was still within my budget. And what did I find? A matching pair of shoes. Oh, uh, what? Are you upset that this isn't all about you right now? <laughs> Actually, Elton got the most excited about this combo. He did, he was so excited, but nothing else. Nothing, nothing else, he was just like, it's fine, mom, it's fine, it's fine. Then he saw this and he was like, and I have to admit, I was too. I was like, this is it, this is it. Yep. We all knew. We all collectively knew this was it. So, again, oops, got ASMR with this right here. We all know that I'm a comfy gal, casual gal for the most part. I love getting dressed up, but I'm casual most of the time. So I got these sneakers that have the Fs all over them. My FU sneakers. He's looking right up. <laughs> here, this is, see, do you remember? Do you remember me picking these up? You, you helped me. We, we tried them all together. We walked around the store. You remember? We said they're the ones I love the best. The best, the best, the best, the best. So they're like kind of reminiscent of the, um, ugh, dare I say, Balenciaga. <laughs> um, sock sneakers, but not. Like they're that kind of material, very comfy slip on. And then they have this Velcro strap across them. This one says Fendi, but. And don't worry, I'm gonna model the outfit for you after. This one says love. <laughs> Fendi love. It's so cute. It's so cute. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my FU outfit on. The big reveal. Here's my my outfit, my look. We've got the adorable. I have to show what else I'm looking at. You love like it. it? Yeah, look you, at the tail. He says he loves it. it. Like, you love this. I choice. think it's, it's furry. I think so. He's like, it's like me. Yeah. It's like me. You guys know. It's like very much like this is the Fendi version of the Prada bag I wear all the time. But shirling instead of nylon, different color. And then the shoes. Tell me these aren't cute. I'm obsessed. I love it. And they're so comfy too. Like, I'm just really comfortable and I feel myself and I am so glad that I took I can't keep having this conversation with that drinking happening <laughs> to, be, to be continued as I was saying I am very happy that I've like taken that money that negative money and I've made something positive out of it for myself because you know, I waited till they paid me. <laughs> the money entered my account last week. And just knowing that like their money was sitting in my account, it just like didn't make me feel good. Um, obviously like it's nice to get paid, but I would have also rather like not have that horrible experience. That would have been even better. And so to be able to just take that money and do something that makes me feel good and have something positive out of such a negative experience is something I'm really grateful for and I'm really glad that I did this. And I will wear this bag with pride and every time I wear this bag I will think about all of the people who love me and support me and who believe in me. And I will not think of my haters because we're saying F you to them. And I am proud of who I am. I will never change who I am to make anybody else happy. And I want you to all walk away with the same feeling. You are good enough as you are. You don't need to do anything 
uh, to change yourself to please other people live to please yourself live to make yourself proud and the people who try to tear you down they don't matter and yes you can go down but no you will always rise again and that's what's important is the rise back up and the best thing you can do for the people who don't expect anything from you is to make something of yourself and your life. That is the biggest F you. To anybody who thinks negatively of you, to anybody who doesn't believe in you, the best thing you can do is say, you don't matter and I'm gonna make something of myself and I'm gonna make something of my life because I do matter and I am valuable. Everybody say F you to the haters, they don't matter. The haters in your life don't matter. And you all matter to me and you are the people that I focus on. And thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for giving me purpose and making me feel loved and valued and special. Um, I appreciate all of you and you are the ones that deserve my energy. And I was happy to share this with all of you. And I hope that um, you take away something from this beyond just like, you know, a nice handbag. I hope that you take away the message of like how to cope when people are negative and, um, I don't know, I hope that this inspired you in some way to rise above other people's negativity and to do something special for yourself and to be kind to yourself and to be good to yourself. Um, because it's really easy to fall into negative self-talk when people around you are being negative. And you guys know I was bullied all throughout school and I struggled a lot with that. And the biggest change for me came when I just stopped caring about them. And I started caring about myself and I started living to make myself happy. And I started being authentic and true to who I was. And all of a sudden, none of the people who hated me mattered because I loved myself. And none of the people who didn't think anything of me and didn't believe in me mattered because I believed in myself and I knew that I was going somewhere. And I feel like I've done that. I've accomplished that. I've accomplished that goal. And I don't know what those people have accomplished and it doesn't matter to me. Maybe they've done great things. Maybe they've done nothing and it doesn't matter. They don't mean anything to me. Um, I don't think ill of them and I don't think good of them. I, they're just like, I'm like, bloop, blip in my mind. And I hope that that's how um, whatever hate and negativity you face in your life can be for you one day. And um, therapy, everyone, <laughs> go to therapy. <laughs> Lots of therapy for all. Talk therapy, but also like maybe sometimes retail therapy. And that's that. So thanks for coming on this little day adventure with me. And you will be seeing her featuring in my life. And until next time, you can click over here to see the first time I ever purchased anything luxury when I hit a million subscribers. Or you can click over here for the time I went shopping on Rodeo Drive with a celebrity stylist. And until then, I'll see you next time.